Yo, what's good guys? Coach Tech here. So today we got a AIOTA review. This bad boy is from Thermal Take. Got this on Amazon, I wanna say like around 60 bucks. Anywhere from like 65 to now, it's like I looked at it just recently, like 80 bucks. But it was just a small form factor AIO, 120 mil AIO. Basically works with all of these mobile manufacturers. We got Asus, uh, Gigabyte, and uh, MSI. I believe also ASRock. Uh, but it doesn't say here but anyways very nice presentation like i said a small form factor yeah yo be beautiful in like um you know small uh, micro atx itx case uh different um we have basically a different breakdown here of uh, the different specs we have the water block the rpm goes up to 3300 for the pump the fans go up to 1500 i'll make it easier i'll just have everything in the description below to make it much more easier for everyone uh, we have the copper plate over here. We have the RGB, RGB controller, the LED, all that nice looking stuff. Based, it actually breaks it down here as it's shown. Uh, we have performance tests with this um, uh, air, uh, with this water cooler, with this AIO, basically get 83 Celsius. Intel box cooler, this is running an i7 for, at four gigs. Doesn't say exactly which i7, but anyways, some sort of representation. And we, this also does work for ASRock. So we have here Asus, Gigabyte, MSI, and ASRock. So mostly every MOBO. But anyways, let's open up this bad boy, you know, for small form factor. Let's see how it performs. I reviewed plenty of different size AIOs. We have 240, 360, and it's my first 120. So let's check it out. Okay, instructional guide, pretty beat up. Now it only does come in black. It doesn't come in white, unfortunately. Uh, it's very well packaged. Everything is nicely sleeved, nicely braided. I did forget to mention for CPU compatibilities, we have basically Intel from LGA 1200 all the way to 1150, and then AMD we have uh, through F, uh, FM2 all the way to AM2, A, yeah, FM2 all the way through AM2. Again, all of this is gonna be description down below. Anyways, now we have, what is this? Some sort of something of something. This is not the instructional guide. Where the heck did I put the instructional guide? All right, anyway, so this is the instructional guide. Uh, da, da, da. What do we have here? We have for AMD processors. Basically shows you how to use it. I believe you use, please remove the stock. Okay, so you do have to remove the stock AMD backplate. So that's kind of whack. I wish they just used the stock AMD backplate. It just works so much easier, but it looks pretty self-explanatory. And then I want to say on the other side is something else. But anyways, I'm going to look through it. We're going to do everything together and whatnot. So this, this is the accessory brackets and all of that stuff. We do get thermal paste. This, this is no bueno. I mean, giving us this little, you know, little ass thermal paste. Come on, give us a magnum size thermal paste. You know, we ID cooling gives us a nice big thermal paste. This is like a one time, maybe two time use. It's no bueno. Uh, what else we get here? I mean, thermal take like, no, no good, man. All right, so this is labeled same uh, universal backplate design. So we have AMD on this side, AMD on this side. Now if we flip it over, we have Intel. We have Intel on this side. So AMD, Intel, very simple. Um, I just wish they would have actually just labeled everything to make it easier, especially if you're new to this. So you're not gonna be like, yo, WTF, I gotta, you know, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. But basically all the retentions and everything is in here. Um, once or when I'm gonna do the installation, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to set this up, how to install everything. I am using a Ryzen 7 2700X. So I am using an AMD processor and that's what we're gonna be basically featuring, an AMD processor. Um, okay, what do we get here? We have different wires, which are labeled, which are nice. Okay, and this is the the ARGB, the, the their hub, basically, you could use. Now, these wirings, I gotta say, it's a plus and minus. I guess it makes everything look a little more neater, but the minus thing is they're a little thick, so when you actually do, when you are doing wire management in the back of your case, it's gonna be a pain to move everything and run everything, but it is what it is, they give us that option. And this is the SATA for power. Now we're gonna do the connections in one second. I just wanna see how everything basically works. And this is officially some cheap, cheap fan. All right, this is some cheap, cheap, cheap looking fan. Feels very cheap, the plastic that they used at least, very cheap. Doesn't look like a good performance fan in my humble opinion. I wish they would've given us a better fan. Uh, but very simple, we have, I believe this is for the addressable uh, factor here, and then we have the three pin 
the three pin connector, which is gonna go into one of these. I'm gonna do this in a second. And then we have the all-in-one itself. All right, so this is the all-in-one. This is the radiator itself. You're gonna throw the fan up here and this is the pump and we have the copper plate over here. Tubing's a de decent size, um, I wanna say. The pump itself looks pretty thick here, it's in the bottom. And this is Intel stock. I believe it's an Intel stock um, plate. We might have to remove it for AMD. Uh, ba -bum, what do we got here? We have, okay, this is for the, th the, the three pin for the pump. And this I wanna say is gonna be for the ARGB. Let me just connect everything right now and just to basically make every, everything easier. All right, so I set everything up, basically I untangled everything. We're gonna go through the setup process. Now there's a two-step setup process. There's the first step, if you are gonna use the built-in ARGB V or your motherboard. Now, if your motherboard does have basically a three pin, right, you could use that via, you, you're gonna use that ARGB functionality if you want to choose it to basically synchronize, synchronize the colors through the motherboards which I showed you. Now, if you don't have that three pin and you don't wanna use that, what you could do is you're gonna use this hub. This hub has mode, you're gonna have your different colors, and then you have your fan LED speeds. Now, the first one is gonna be with the ARGB. Now, this long wire that says basically five volt, this is your ARGB which you're gonna plug in into your ARGB, the three pin coming off your mobile. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna, so you're gonna plug this into here first, and then from here, you're gonna plug in this male, this long wire, right? You're gonna plug in the pump from the pump. You're gonna plug in the wire, the addressable wire into here, right? And then the, into the fan, the fan has, um, basically has a splitter. And then you're gonna plug it in into the other end, going like that. And that's basically it. And then you're gonna plug in this three pin ARGB into your motherboard and that's it. And you could use all the software and whatnot from, from your motherboard if you wanna do that like that and then you have basically a splitter running here and then you could, you know, daisy chain them as much as you want. Now, if you don't, and this spongy, I called it braided, but it's like a spongy design. It's little, it is what it is. Now, if you're not using that, if you're not using the ARGB, what you're gonna do is you're gonna use the, the hub itself and it's similar process, fan first. You're gonna plug it into the fan first and then from the fan, from the fan, right? And then you're gonna plug it into here first and that's it. And there you go, and then you're gonna plug in the SATA for the power, and voila, you have the pump ARGB connected, as well as you have the, the fan ARGB connected. And now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna plug in the three pin, right, this three pin over here into your motherboard three pin, as well as for the pump itself, for the pump to circulate, you're gonna plug in this, this is for power for the pump, and the same thing, you're gonna plug it into your motherboard three pin, and voila, and that's all you have to do, and that's basically it. And this is the VDG connector for a gigabyte motherboard, so you have that option. But anyways, everything is out the way. Let me see how this bad boy performs. Let's do the installation guide as well. Let's go. All right, so I got everything installed. The instructional guide, I gotta say, is very uh, very simple to use. You have Intel up top, as you guys can see, and you have AMD in the bottom. Since I was using AMD, the bottom instructions, which I follow, like I said, very simple, very self-explanatory. I just figured, you know, I don't wanna make the video too long to basically go over everything, you know, go over everything. So I just figured I'll just show you guys. You guys, it's very simple, man. But anyways, uh, the tubing, I gotta say, is a bit too long, as you guys can see, it's basically now, I, I mounted it like this. I don't wanna mount it below because it's, I don't want it to go low, I guess, you know, in the sense of just hitting the GPU. So I decided to go here like that. I mean, there's no right or wrong way. I mean, whichever way you, you think is best, it's gonna fit in your case. I just don't like it. For a 120, uh, for a 120 mil um, AIO, the, the tubing is too long because the majority of time that you're, um, if you have a 120, you're gonna put it in the back. You know what I mean? So this is a bit too long for me, way too long. Um, but overall, let's see how the temps run. I mean, you know, you could control the uh, the colors with the RGB controller, you know, basically changes the colors. And when I just have a basically rainbow, just keep it simple. And um, yeah, let's hear like, well, I just want to, this is right now, I have the Asia Horse FS9002 fans at 1000 RPM or 800 RPM. Let's hear how it sounds and then we're going to turn it up and whatnot. It's just camera. Uh, the fan is spinning at like it's basic 1000 RPM. 
doesn't sound too bad the pump does not make so much noise of course the glass is on it's bearable it's bearable uh it's not too bad but uh let's let's get into the performance let's do all that let's go all right let's check a look at the idle temp so right, right now we basically have 8 to 64 we have idle at 36 degrees c this is the ryzen 2700x overclock to 4 gigahertz on all cores guys very important all cores anyways uh let's run the benchmark and Let's see how this bad boy performs. Let's go. All right, so we have Ida 64 running now for over an hour. All right, we got max temp. All right, so it just it just spiked up to 70, but it's basically running currently at 62C. Now what I want to do is, uh, well, first of all, let's hear how it sounds. Let me just lower these. I have them at running at 1500. Let me lower these fans. Not too bad. The fan is not running that loud, which is a which is a plus sign. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run Unigen in the background and just see how hot this system gets all together. Let's go. All right. So lastly, we have Unigen Valley, uh, Valley Unigen running in the background. We get a maximum current at 75 degrees C. Um, we have a GPU everything turned up. Now I gotta say for an actual AIO, most air coolers which I actually reviewed did actually perform better than this. Um, 120 mil AIO. I'll, I will have them in the description below. Definitely check them out. I mean, it does a decent job. If you have, like I said, if you have a small form factor build and if you don't want an air cooler, maybe this is your best choice. It, it's not bad, but like I said, there's air, there's air coolers who actually outperform this AIO. Anyways, let me know what you cats think in the comments below. As always, guys, I'm Kosher Tech. I'm gonna catch cats next time. Deuces.